بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله today إن شاء الله we will be starting uh, سورة الرحمن uh, one of the surahs that we all love to read one of the surahs that shows the blessings the bounties that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has created for us so if we have a look at the last two eyes of Surah Al-Qamar, the Surah before Surah Al-Rahman, the Surah, surah Al-Qamar ends with إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ وَنَهَرٍ فِي مَقْعَدِ صِدْقٍ عِنْدَ مَلِيكٍ مُقْتَدِرٍ Indeed, the righteous will be uh, enjoying gardens and rivers. In a seat, uh, in a seat of honor with the powerful almighty listen to these two words with the powerful almighty this is so majestic it touches the heart but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the next surah immediately by saying ar-rahman so this powerful the, the most powerful the almighty is the same as the most merciful. He is the most merciful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about being mercy in several surahs. And uh, to show that he, he, will, he will have mercy for the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, in the Day of Judgment. And this is one of the promises that he has given to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, when he said, fi ummatik. When Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was so worried about his Ummah, about his nation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised him that we will not let you down with your Ummah. So Allah will have the mercy for us in the day of judgment. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in kullu man fi samawati wal ardi illa ati rahman So everyone, everyone will come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the merciful, to the most merciful. We will be there. When we start by saying Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, we start with the name of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Bismillah Ar Rahman. Someone might say, Oh, how can I how can I do something good? Um, I made so many sins. Uh, how can I how I feel ashamed to stand in, um, in prayer? Uh, I, I cannot meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, say bismillah by the name of Allah, get into any action by the name of Allah. The most merciful, Ar Rahman. Now, what's the difference between the two words, Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim? So, uh, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahman is for both believers and non-believers. You know, even even uh, uh, the non-believers have mercy among each other. And Allah will have mercy on them when they do something good, then they this will be recognized. But a Rahim is for the believers only. And the proof is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful with the believers. He shows extra mercy to the believers. So to start with the surah, uh, we, we find that this surah has 78 ayahs and it's a Mecca surah. It's the, uh, it was revealed before the migration of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, to Medina. And it's the only surah that starts, starts with one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ar-Rahman. 
In the surah, we will find uh, an ayah that was repeated 31 times, and we will talk about that. And the reason that this surah was revealed, there are several reasons. Uh, the non-believers uh, used to say, when, when they were asked to prostrate Allah, to believe in Allah, they used to say, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمُ اسْجُدُوا لِلرَّحْمَنِ قَالُوا وَمَا الرَّحْمَنِ And when it said to them, prostrate to the most merciful, obey the most merciful, believe in the most merciful, they would say, what is the most merciful? Should we, should we obey to someone uh, who gives orders to us? Well, we, 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 they don't believe. They don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So their word was, what is a Rahman? Wama Rahman. So this surah is an answer to this question, Wama Rahman. It, uh, uh, another uh, reason for uh, uh, the revelation of this surah is that uh, when the, uh, the non-believers used to say about Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّمَا يُعَلِّمُهُ بَشَرْ He is taught by a human. A human is teaching him Qur'an. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered in this surah, Ar-Rahman allama al-Qur'an. The most merciful taught the Qur'an. So this is the starting point of the surah. Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. This is one of the most uh, beloved names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to our hearts. It gives us tranquility. It g gets us back to connect again with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that he is merciful. We know that no matter what sins we have, we have a merciful, we have a merciful God. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala علم القرآن. القرآن is a catalog for the life of man. It has everything that a human being needs from birth to death and even after. So whoever applies the rules of the Quran would be a winner. As I mentioned, it has everything related to man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us the eyes, so we should not. He, he asked us in the catalog not to look at anything haram. He created for us the ears, we, and we have not to listen to any haram. He gave us the hands, so we have, not, we have to abstain from stealing. He gave us the tongue. The tongue is the most, the, the, the only uh, muscle in the in the human being that does not feel tired, but we have not to use our tongue for lying, for back back backbiting. So Allah gave us all the bounties. He created us. He perfected us. He gave us a catalog, a, a, a program, so we have to follow in our life. خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانِ He created man. عَلَّمَهُ الْبَيَانِ He taught man the eloquent of speech. What is al-bayan? Al-bayan is to be able to express yourself to someone who is listening to you and to make him understand what you want to say. This is your language. This is the language that you are speaking. So if, you, if, you, uh, if your family speak Arabic, then you will be fluent in Arabic. If your family speaks Urdu, you will be fluent in Urdu. If the 
whatever language the family speaks, then the child will get these, this language from the environment he lives in. If you want your child to learn another language, to be more eloquent, then you have to put him in the environment that teaches him this new language. Allah taught Adam all the names, all the names. And those names were transmitted to us. Now let's go back again. A baby would learn the language of his family. The parents learned the language from their parents and the grandparents learned it from their grandparents. Go back up, up, up until you find, you reached to Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam, who was taught all the names by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember in the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا He didn't say the actions or the verbs, only the names. He taught Adam the names. So this is rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he created some kind of communication between people so they can understand each other. And the more learned one is the more eloquent one. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do also? He created everything in this dunya. الشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ بحسبان. The sun and the moon move by precise calculation. بحسبان. Very precise. So accurately. The sun starts... Uh, uh, indicates the beginning of the day and the end of the day also. So it indicates a day. The moon indicates the beginning of the month and the end of the month. And if you think about this, the worship Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, most worships are uh, connected to the moon and not to the sun. For example, if, if we connect fasting today to certain days, then these days will be the same. If it's hot day, it will stay hot, we will always be fasting during hot days. If it's a cold day, then we will always be fasting in a cold day. But in order not to have to, to fast always in the same time, always in summer, for example, in order not to go to uh, Hajj always in summer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala linked these, uh, these ibadat, these worships by, by the moon. And we know that the lunar year is always 11 days earlier than the next, than the uh, previous, uh, previous year. And that's why we fast during all the year. It's not just in summer, it's not just in winter. And this is out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he made us, now we are talking about fasting, that he made us fast uh, certain hours, not always the longest hours. So to go back to the sun and the moon, we know that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Yaseen, لَلشَّمْسُ يَنْبَغِي لَهَا أَنْ تُدْرِكَ الْقَمَرِ It's not allowable for the sun to reach the moon. 
both never collapsed any time. They never touched any time. They never got closer any time. They might be one in front of the other, but not at the same place. And this is the scale of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a precise scale. It's precise calculation. When Najmu wa Shajaru yasjudan and stars and trees follow the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know in, in the Arabic, Arabic language, the word an Najm has two meanings. The first one, an Najm, the, 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 the meaning that we all know, is the star in the sky. But the second meaning, we call the plant that grows on the surface of the earth, of the, uh, of the earth, without a stem, we call it najm. So we have two meanings of a najm. And if we look closer at the, at the ayah, we are talking here about plants and the trees. In the previous ayahs, we talked about a shams wal qamar, the sun and the moon. Think about this, the sun and the moon are in a pie. The uh, plants and the, ground, uh, the, the trees are on the ground. So everything in this dunya was created according to the calculations, to the precise catalog of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is following the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is fulfilling the mission that they were created for. And the heaven he raised high. Do you see any poles that are holding the heavens? No. It's just a word, kon, be, and it is. Kun fayakun. And he has set, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set up the balance. What's a balance? The balance is a symbol of something that would give the uh, dues to everything. What should we do? We should follow the dues. Allah tatgaw fil mizan. So why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create this balance? So that you may not transgress due balance. We just said, It's not allowable for the sun to reach the moon, nor does the night overtake the day. But each is in an orbit, swimming. So there is a balance in this dunya. And we have, we as humans have to keep this balance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to be so, we have to be so. Ordered us to, to be good, we have to be good. This is the balance. If we follow the orders, then we will be, we will be uh, winners. We have to do that. وَأَقِيمُ الْوَزْنَ بِالْقِسْطِ وَلَا تُخْسِرُ الْمِيزَانِ So establish dues in justice. And do not make deficient the balance. Your balance should establish just always. You should be fair. You should be fair in all your relations to Allah, to Prophet Muhammad, to people, to nature, to children, to plants, to animals. You have to give every, everyone their dues. And we, when we explain Surah Al-Mutaffifin, when we reflected on that Surah, the surah started with وَيْلٌ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا اكْتَالُوا عَلَى النَّاسِ يَسْتَوْفُونَ وَإِذَا كَالُوهُمْ أَوْ وَزَنُوهُمْ يَخْسِرُونَ 
it's woe to those who, who give less than due. When they take a measure for, from people, they take it in full. But if, if they give by measure, they would cause, uh, they, uh, they, they will cause loss. They will not be just. So this is again from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he wanted to have justice and uh, dues and rights for everyone. And the earth he laid out for creatures. Wada'aha means he made it flat so that we can live on it. Al-Anam is everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and has a, a ruh. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created earth. And there are people in everywhere. And he made this, this earth huge so that if someone uh, got uh, restrained in one place, he can leave and go migrate to another place, whether for to seek uh, knowledge, to seek uh, sustenance, to see uh, whether running away from wars, whatever. You can, you can always leave one place to go to another place. And what did he place in it? Therein is fruit. And palm trees having uh, sheaths. She there are dates in these palm trees. So there is food on this earth. And imagine that, uh, look at the ayah. It starts with fruits. And this reminds us of Surah Al-Waqi'ah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَفَاكِهَةٍ مِمَّا يَتَخَيَّرُونَ وَلَحْمِ طَيْرٍ مِمَّا يَشْتَهُونَ And fruit of what they select. And then followed by the meat of their desire, whatever they want to eat. And this gives us the, uh, the fact that it's more healthy, it's so healthy, it's healthier to start eating fruit before you start eating the meat. Allah also created for us grain. So, grain having husks and scented plants. And the uh, pulps of those grains. al hab for example, we have wheat, lentil, beans, fava beans. So these are called hab. al asuf is the cover. So what is the relation? wal al asfi wal rayhan So let's take the wheat, for example. The wheat has a cover. And it has the inner seed. So when, when you want to grain it, grain it all. Don't separate the cover from the uh, inner, inner part of the wheat. And that's why we have so many problems with uh, wheat and flour these days. They, 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 they don't use it as what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recommended them to use it. So, which of the favors of your Lord would you deny? 
which of the blessings of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for you would you deny? You choose. If you look at the ayah, Rabbikuma to to ban. So we have dual here. Allah is talking to two things, two uh, entities here. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Qara'tu surat al-Rahmani ala al-jinni fakanu ahsana raddan minkum. كنت كلما أتيت على قوله فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان قالوا لا بشيء من نعمك ربنا نكذب فلك الحمد so سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم said I read Surah Al-Rahman this surah I read it for uh, to um, the jinn and they answered they reacted to it way better than you did, you human. Whenever I used to say, فَبِأَيِّ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ When I got to say, to see, to say, which of the blessings you, you, of your Lord would you deny? They said, not with a single one, Ya Allah, we deny. We do not deny a single one of the blessings. We thank you. So we have to learn this. Whenever you read Surah Al-Rahman and you pass by, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ You should answer, لَا بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ نِعَمِكَ رَبَّنَا نُكَذِّبْ فَلَكَ الْحَمْدُ Who don't deny any of your blessings, Ya Allah. And we thank you for all your blessings. This ayah was repeated 31 times in this surah. Repetition has some uh, benefits. So what's the benefit? It will remind us of each and every benefit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Each and every blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Okay, but you will say that it will be mentioned in one of the ayahs uh, that talks about uh, punishment. Okay. How can this be a blessing? This is a real blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, warning before he punishes. This is a, a, one of the uh, a points that shows the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ صَلْصَالٍ كَالْفَخَّارِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created man from clay, like that of pottery. And he created the jinn from smokeless flame of fire. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created man from clay, and then after he perfected it, he blew the uh, spirit in man. Now imagine yourself, you are building a building and you want to demolish, demo, demolish, demolish this building. So what would you do? You, you would destroy it from top down. Now, Allah created, gave the spirit as a ruh, as the end. So at death, the first thing that will be taken from man will be the ruh, the, what was given to him the last. And the jinn is created from fire. Now you might ask the question, how would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punish jinn in Jahannam when they are created of fire? We as humans are created from clay. This is what the Quran says. Okay, 
get a big piece of stone and hit someone very hard, hard, would he have pain or not? This is clay, this is clay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most powerful. He can do whatever he wants. He can punish from the same thing that he had created, from the same material that he had created with. So, خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ صَلْصَالٍ كَالْفَخَارِ وَخَلَقَ الْجَانَّ مِنْ مَارِجٍ مِنْ نَارٍ What's next? فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ وَلَا بِوَاحِدَةٍ يَا أَضْلَاهِ فَلَكَ الْحَمْدِ Not with a single one. Just thank you, Ya Allah. رب المشرقين ورب المغربين. He is the Lord of the two sunrises and the Lord of the the two sunsets. What does this mean? How come that we have two sunrises and two sunsets? Okay, for this we would say. Uh, we know that in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَشْرِقُ وَالْمَغْرِبِ To Allah belongs the east and the west. Because this, this is singular. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, رَبُّ الْمَشْرِقَيْنِ وَالْمَغْرِبَيْنِ The Lord of the two sunrises and the two, suns uh, and the two sunsets. So we have dual here. In Surah Al-Safat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا وَرَبُّ الْمَشَارِقِ the Lord of the heavens and the earth and that between them and the Lord of the sunrises. What does this mean? How can this be? Singular, dual, and plural. So, for at the same place, wherever we live, someone lives in uh, let's say, Fremont. So they know that the sun rises from this side and it uh, sets from this side. Okay? So there is one place that the sun rises from and one place that the sun sets from. But when we know that the sun does not rise into a place except that it sets from another place. So when it sun rises for us, it's, it sets for another people. And when it sets for us, then it rises for other people. This means that each uh, uh, set, each rise has a set. Each sunrise has a sunset, and each sunset has a sunrise. So there are two sunrises and two sunsets. Now, let's say that the earth rotates. So for each second, its sunset, the sun uh, rises for some people and sets for other people for each second. So this means that it has several rises, places where it rises and places where it sets. And this is how we understand the singular, the plural, the dual and the plural way of saying the Lord of the two, uh, of the two sunrises and the Lord of the two sunsets, the Lord of the east and the west where the sun set, rises and where the sun sets and the Lord of the sun rises as plural. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Not with a single one, Ya Allah. We thank you. So Allah is repeating the ayahs now. 
Okay. Now, when when we have this, uh, when we read the different uh, ways that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentioned in the Quran about the same thing, and when when those jinn answered Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, let's now stop for a second. When we read the Quran, we have to interact with the Quran. It's not just pages that we are flipping. No. It's a way of reading that when we when we pass by an ayah that has uh, istighfar, then we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. When we pass on an ayah that has uh, uh, glorifying to Allah and thanking Allah, we have to say Alhamdulillah. We have to say Subhanallah. When there is an ayah that says, uh, that talks about repentance, we have to say Ya Allah, we ask you, we, we witness that we are repenting and we want you to accept that. We have to interact with the Quran. It's not only just ayahs that are being repeated. There is something that we have to be aware of every time that we read this Quran. And subhanAllah, each one of these ayahs that are repeated in the same surah remind you of all the blessings that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for you, in you and for you. فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ مَرَجَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ يَلْتَقِيَانِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala released the two seas meeting side by side. What does this mean? We can read the next ayah and... Uh, understand both together between them is a barrier so neither of them transgresses all right now what does this mean so the water of the two seas meet together but they don't mix and this is of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine that the pure water, the tasty water meets with the salty water and we only have salty water. How can we drink? How can we live? How can It will be impossible. Take for example, the Red Sea. The Red Sea is open to the uh, Bahr al Arab. Okay, from the south. And this is the only place that this sea is uh, open to because it's as if it's semi closed sea. Now, this Red Sea meets with Bahr al Arab in Babul Mandab, Babul Mandab Street, the gate of Babul Mandab. Now, the scientists noticed that the Red Sea, the water of the Red Sea, is, is thick, heavy, and because of strong evaporation and the uh, close, closeness of this, uh, it's semi-closed, uh, the, the Red Sea. So the water is so salty. So it goes down of the Bahr al-Arab. The, the water do not mix. And the same thing is for the Mediterranean and the Atlantic Ocean. 
They both meet at uh, the Strait of uh, Gibraltar. So the, the current of the water goes, gushes into the, uh, uh, into the Atlantic Ocean. They don't mix completely. They meet, but they don't mix. Again, which of these blessings do you deny? None, ya Allah. We thank you. So what would the merge of these seas, of these water do? Out of both out of both seas come pearl and coral. By nature, both the pearl and coral live in salty water. They live in the place where these uh, seas meet, where the uh, pure water, where the uh, uh, non-salty water meets the salty water. We know that uh, there are cultured pearls now, but this is not what it's meant. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and to him belong the ships elevated in, in the sea like mountains. So the huge ships that float on top of, word, of water are what? Are likened to mountains on earth. Think about this ayah. Were there huge, big ships at the time of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? No. These things were built uh, centuries ago. This is an indication that the Quran is not the words of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is an indication that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala knows what was, what is, and what will be in the future. Think, reflect, reflect on what you are reading. Which of the blessings of you, Lord, would you deny? None, Ya Allah. We believe in all the blessings. We believe in all what you have created. We believe in everything that you have done. And we thank you for that. So now, let's think of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to, to know from these ayahs. Allah wants us to think deeply, not just to read and flip pages. The same surah, amazing surah, so powerful surah, starts with mercy, gives tranquility, makes us think of Allah's bounties. So this uh, elaboration on the surahs, these meanings of the surahs will get us to understand the deep meanings. And of course, Allah is the all-knowing. We just do our best just to, uh, to get uh, whatever Allah gives us of the knowledge. But the real knowledge is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to connect us with the Quran. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us comprehensive understanding of the Quran. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us with the Quran. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten our path with the Quran. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those servants of Allah whom he is pleased with, who, whom they got the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fulfilled everything that they were asked for. This is our class for today. Inshallah, we will go on next time. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Ya rabbana laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.